I bought my first property a few years ago. It had two bedrooms and one bathroom. I didn't sense anything wrong with the place when I looked at it with my realtor. The house had been vacant for some time and wasn't in the best part of town, nor was it in the best shape. But it was all I could afford. That and the house had a lot of potential. I loved the layout. Shortly after moving in, I met the neighbor across the street who told me that someone broke into the house and committed suicide half a year ago before I bought it. The owner found the body, so there was no telling how long it had been there. The neighbor suspected the person probably died of an overdose given the nature of the area. I was taken back by the news and hoped it wasn't a sign for things to come. Soon after, I started hearing voices in different parts of the house, and this was during the day, since I worked nights. The voices weren't from any one source. It always seemed like there were multiple people conversing with one another, as if there was a gathering of some sort. I never understood what the voices were saying. They all sounded mumbled and incoherent. The first time I heard it was when I was in my bedroom, browsing the internet on my laptop. I heard voices coming from the living room. I went out there to see who it was, but saw nothing, and the voices had stopped by the time I got there. The second time I heard the voices was when I was watching TV in the living room, and heard voices coming from either the bedrooms or hallway. Again, I went to see who it was, but didn't see anyone. I thought maybe it was the neighbors passing by and talking to each other as there was a door to the balcony at the end of the hallway. As time passed, I knew something strange was going on because it kept happening more consistently. I also started seeing flashes of dark shadows dashing by me or around corners, dishes clattering and doors opening or closing by themselves. Sometimes those shadows would just linger and stand in the corner of a room. It scared the bejesus out of me the first time I saw one in the hallway when I got up to use the restroom in the middle of the night. That was on one of my days off. I thought about moving and selling the place, but it was out of the question since I've invested so much in it. The negative energies in the house started to get to me. I found it hard to sleep or eat and lost a lot of weight very quickly. I began looking pale and sickly. Occasionally, I'd have this dream of attending a party in my own home. In the visions, there were a bunch of men and women of different ethnicities. They were all very well dressed and engaged in conversations with one another. They never seemed to notice or react to me. I was like a ghost among them. About four months later, at around 11 p.m., on one of my days off, while I was up playing video games, I had to use the bathroom. I flicked on the light, and what I saw almost gave me a heart attack. There, perched atop the toilet, was an old, skinny, and wrinkly woman. She was naked and had her face buried in the palms of her hands. Her curly, white, matted hair covered her face. The skin on the woman had a gray hue to it. I froze in place, staring at her in horror as my heart attempted to beat out of my chest. The woman did not speak, nor did she move. My wits finally came to me after what seemed like hours. I backed away quickly. After I regained my composure, I peeked into the bathroom and saw the old woman had disappeared. I called a locally well-known shaman named Cha the next day. Cha said the old woman was a powerful spirit that controlled the other spirits and ghosts on the entire block. He advised me to make an offering of food, incense, and joss money. Cha said that should stop the hauntings. I did as he said, using the exact words he taught me. Unfortunately, the hauntings did not stop, and only exacerbated it. I started hearing the woman's voice in my head. She was angry. She yelled at me in Hmong. Where is my ring? What did you do to it? 
I cried, telling her in Hmong. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have your ring. She then replied, I know you have it. Give me back my ring or else you will see the wrath of my powers. The first time I heard the old woman, I was so scared I checked into a hotel for a few days. I was afraid the spiteful ghost would follow me if I stayed at a friend or family member's house and cause problems. That was not something I wanted to have on my conscience. Whenever she spoke to me, I'd feel nauseous and get a headache. More time went on and my health declined further. I went into the ER and got tested for all sorts of stuff, but the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on. I again called Cha and had him come over to the house. Cha walked around the house and said there was a lot of negative energy inside, especially coming from the guest bedroom. He also said the presence in the house was the source of my sickness. As soon as Cha said that, the old woman started shouting and demanded that I find her ring. My head felt like it was about to explode. I fought through it though, as Cha and I looked for the old woman's ring. We found it on the shelf in the closet after 15 minutes of looking. Cha and I buried it in the backyard furthest from the house. He said a few words telling the old woman we have done as she requested and to take the ring and never come back to the house because it is no longer hers. He then gave her an offering of incense and Joss money. From that day forward, the hauntings ceased and the old woman was never heard from again. I also got better as well.